On this edition of Around BCC, students get a first-hand look at what it will be like when they hit the job site. And our alumni profile features a woman who enjoys getting involved in her community. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. The spring semester has begun here at Bristol Community College, a time when students who are toward the end of their time here look forward to graduation and what's next in their life. Many will look to enter the job force right away. And BCC has a program to give students a look at the day-to-day -day grind. For the last two years, the BCC Career Center has worked with Meditech Incorporated on a job shadow day where students spend the day at the medical software company learning what it's like to work in a corporate environment. BCC Coordinator of Career Services Patricia Condon says the shadow day opportunity gives students the insight into what to expect on the job. I think it's important that they, that they find out what it's like to work for the day and they see somebody who's working. If you want to work in communications or you want to work in television productions, you can take classes, you can read about it, but to actually go and spend the day seeing a professional in that field go about their day-to-day -day responsibilities and you know see the challenges and see just experience what it's like, I think that's wonderful. But the other thing that I really stress to students is you will have an opportunity if you want to work for a company like Meditech. You know, I talk with students who want to get who want to get jobs. Um, and if you want to get a job, you have to become the perfect person. You have to sell yourself to the employer. These are the skills that I have. This is what I can do for your company. What a great opportunity to sit and watch somebody who's doing their job on a day-to-day -day basis, see what they do, and then you'll know what that perfect person looks like. Not only that, but you get to talk with the person and find out about some of the challenges and get advice from them. You know, what advice would you give to a, a student who's thinking about working in this field? And they get to ask that. Eleven students in at least their second year at BCC took part in this year's Job Shadow Day from Meditech's Canton facility. Condon says each student interested in the program needs to be screened by both the college and Meditech. So once the students come and tell me, you know, express their interest, what I do is I have the student give me a resume. So the student has to submit a resume to me in the, at the Career Center. I then review their resume and I, I look over the job paths at Meditech with the student and then the student can identify and say, you know, these are some of the careers that I think I would be interested in at Meditech. I'm very interested in a sales position. I'm interested in uh, web design. I'm interested in um, customer service um, for a software company. What's really nice is it's not just students that may want to work at Meditech, but students that have an interest in programming in general may want to participate in the program. Um, so then I meet with the student, go over the resume, I submit the resume to Meditech, and it's actually is the um, human resource uh, coordinator at Meditech that makes the decision as to who the student will shadow for the day. Condon says the good thing about the job shadow experience is that any student from any major can take part. Meditech will hire students with any major, academic major. So we maybe had students, we would have students in nursing that were interested, liberal arts majors. Um, they often look for students with good math and science backgrounds. But it's not only good for a student who's getting ready to graduate and is thinking about, I might want to work at Meditech, but that second year student that really doesn't know exactly what they want to do, that says, you know, I might be interested in science, I might be interested in engineering, uh, but I also like communications and I like to write. Well, what a great opportunity for them to spend the day at Meditech and observe someone in, in, in engineering and see what it's like. Sophomore Crystal Michaels is a science biology major and saw the job shadow experience as an opportunity to see what her future may hold. Oh, I think this was great. Um, especially with me graduating next semester with my associates in science um, and biology. I wasn't really sure um, where to go or what to do even with an associate's degree. Um, and having them help, help me at the Career Center just opened up a lot of doors for me to see, you know, what opportunities that there are in life with what I'm doing in school. So this was great that they um, actually, you know, have something like this with the job shadowing to just get some knowledge and experience just to see, you know, what I have for um, stuff in the future that I could look, look forward to. Communications major Joseph Sylvia agrees 
saying the day-long experience will give him the opportunity to ask many questions. 20 years from now, when I'm in my career, like the place that I want to be, I want to be happy. I want to be enjoying my job. I want to be, of course, making good money, what you do, what you go to a job to do, you know? Um, so you can't really get everything you would want to get out of somebody in one day, but, um, you know, you can, you can get a pretty decent amount. So, you know, by the, I really want to take away, you know, just how, how she kind of puts her day together, how she organizes her, her deal, maybe not the actual technical aspects of it, but the attitude behind it, you know? So I'm just curious about that. Students are not the only beneficiary of the job shadow day. Meditech senior recruiting specialist Ann Curran says her company views this experience as a great recruiting and public relations tool. Meditech looks at all different types of, of candidates. So yes, we look at the four-year student, we look at the two-year student. We also look at individuals with no education. We're going to look at the entire candidate. So if someone has that two-year college experience but a lot of work experience, that tends to be quite successful for us because they've been in a professional setting. They may even have some sort of applicable experience. Maybe the person was a CNA or a lab tech or something along those lines. So it can be a great fit for us even with the two-year degree or you know limited schooling or the four-year degree works quite well for us as well but we also have a thorough training program so when you come into Meditech it's kind of like Meditech University you're learning something entirely new um, and being in school it shows us you have an aptitude for learning and you can kind of transition that to to Meditech. Condon says students experiences after their day at Meditech tell her that the effort is worth it. It's interesting, I always ask students to get back to me and follow up with me after they participate in any type of program that the Career Center sponsors. And last year, every single student who participated did contact me. They all called me and they said it was a wonderful day. But it was interesting, one student called me from the parking lot at, of Meditech on her cell phone and said, you know, Pat, I just want to get back to you and let you know what an awesome day I had. And I thought that summed it up, you know, that a student would actually call from the parking lot of Meditech on her way home to tell us what a great opportunity and what a wonderful learning experience it was for her. Sylvia says students who are looking for advice at taking that first step toward their professional career need to consider taking part in programs like the Job Shadow Day. It will open your eyes. It kind of kind of pushes you, kind of pushes you to, you know, make some time in your busy schedule of your college life and your friends and your work and kind of, you know, makes you, you know, let's think of the big picture for a little bit. Let's think about where I'm going to be, you know, where is this person be that I'm shadowing? How do they do their job? And, you know, it's, you know, sometimes in college it's easy to get like a you know, kind of a you know, childish mindset to settle down. It's kind of maybe still transition from high school a little bit, but, you know, you kind of spread your wings a little bit. You know, you're meeting some real adults, and these are going to be, these are real business people, and this is, you know, this is the real world, you know, kind of smacks you upside the head and say, hey, you know, this is life, this is your career, you know, so let's get the ball rolling. The BCC Career Center is always looking to collaborate with other companies who are willing to co-sponsor a job shadow day. If you think your company would be interested in the program, contact Patricia Condon at 508-678-2811, extension 2228. We'll have more around BCC right after this. Welcome back. On this month's Alumni in Your Community, we profile a woman who has accomplished a lot, and all with only her BCC Associate's degree. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Diane Nichols, BCC graduate, class of 1980. I first heard about BCC just um, with my guidance counselors at New Bedford High School. Um, since I wasn't really sure where uh, my career path was leading me, um, they advised me that this was a good place to start. That you know, if you're not sure um, which uh, path you want to take, then this is a good place to start to really get the basics going on, and then you'll just kind of figure out, figure things out as you go along. And and um, pretty much that's how I found. My life went. I just kind of learned by doing, um, talking to people, following examples, and took it from there. So BCC was kind of the, you know, the the, the starting block for, for my career. I started off um, in just business administration, and then I kind of took took off to the um, administrative assistant side of things, and that's what I graduated in. So if you look back, you can see that I was about three years in what's a two-year college, but I kind of was back and forth what I was doing as far as my majors go, so I ended up with the administrative assistant degree. I didn't move on degree-wise, but I did take a lot of classes at UMass Dartmouth, and then I always, you know, continued um, education in other, you know, ways, like, um, you know, public speak training, you know, the Dale, Dale Garnicky classes, um, the um, public speaking classes like Toastmasters. I got involved with, like, the um, the South Coast Learning Center and did some more uh, computer classes, accounting classes, things like that. So I always continued taking classes because I knew how valuable that was. Um, but I didn't formally go on to college from BCC because I just really got involved um, in my career path in, you know, family, you know, marriage, children, all that, that I never really went back, you know, to complete the formal education. But I really uh, felt like the background that I got was a great step and then just continuing. I mean, I'm always willing to learn. I'm always taking new classes here and there. Um, but BCC was really kind of the, you know, the building block for everything else that happened. When I, I graduated with that degree, which is basically administrative assistant, secretarial science program, they called it back then. I don't think they even call it that anymore. But um, I really went to work as a secretary, and I, um, I was working for the city of New Bedford in um, the emergency medical services office, which was just funny how I ended up in there. I had, ta had summer jobs with the city, and I had gotten, you know, I was out of school. They were looking for someone. I filled that bill. Didn't really work there that long when I got plucked out of that office when the mayor's, the mayor's office, the mayor of New Bedford, who back then was Jack Markey, needed um, a secretarial assistant in his office, and they were looking throughout the different departments throughout the city to see who really uh, could fill the bill, and they asked me to come up. So I you know, was pretty flattered by that, that they saw my work, and they knew of me, and they asked me in. So I worked in the mayor's office until he um, left to become a judge, took a judgeship. Everybody in the mayor's office leaves at that time. Um, and I went to work for um, the Swain School of Design um, in the administrative office there. I worked for the um, Dean of Academic Affairs, and that was an exciting time there, but it was also a big time of change there where um, that school was being absorbed into the UMass uh, Dartmouth system. Um, and at that point, I didn't know if I was going to go along with that. I worked for the Economic Development Corporation for the city of New Bedford. I, I did the Economic Development Corporation job. They had me doing study, coming in as a secretary, and then I was um, kind of promoted, if you want to think of it that way, into being the trade show manager, is that I was the person in the office for a couple of years doing just the, uh, the office end of trade shows, which they would go out and do these international commercial fishery shows. They had salesmen that would travel, you know, across the country to promote um, our fishing port. And I was doing the, the secretarial side of it. And then when this particular gentleman left, moved on to another job, my boss said, well, you know more about that show than anybody else in the office right now. Why don't you take it over? And so I said, okay, I would do that. And I started traveling and doing sales. And I kind of was no longer a secretary or an administrative assistant, I was a manager. So when I go back to when I actually got the job at the Chamber of Commerce, they were looking for administrative support and marketing a trade show support. So I kind of got into that role again and I started doing um, more of the trade show than the administrative support end of it. And I know that just built to the things that we did at the Chamber over the years, um, the home shows, the business expos, you know, all these little tabletop expos, all that kind of thing. Um, so somewhere in the mix of all that was a time <laughs> that I got married and had my family and um, because of having children, I really didn't want to do the traveling part of it anymore. The chamber job was a stay at home kind of doing all local kind of events, which I um, preferred and um, I actually did that for 20 years. So um, it was a pretty much a long career at the Chamber of Commerce. I really truly am a community person, that's how I found myself um, kind of where I fit in best was that I'd like to be out there in the community. So I want to work in the nonprofit sector. I want to be out there in the community. 
um, just helping people, helping organizations. And I really know, have found my way around. I mean, I really feel good about that. So there was this one point a few years ago where I kind of stepped away from that, from the Chamber of Commerce, because my husband and I actually opened up our own small business. And it was kind of a, a, like a, a passion of his to open a small business focusing on golf, because he's a big golf pro, he's a teaching pro, he's a lifetime golf player, but he has a regular day job too. So I said, well, if we're going to do this, I'm going to step into it full, and I'm going to use all my skills and you know, opening a business, uh, managing it, doing the bookkeeping, the accounting, the payroll, the employees, the training and run it. So we opened Oceans 18 into a black light mini golf um, in the north out of New Bedford about three years ago now. And it was kind of fun doing that for a while, but I also found that I missed my community involvement in doing the kinds of things that I had been doing for so long. And I started getting back into um, doing some consulting work. I started doing some consulting work, doing trade show management for the chamber. They had me back. South Coast Media did their Go Healthy Expo. Um, I ran Summerfest for the city last year, which is the Great New Bedford Summerfest, a big event. I had run it basically under contract for the city last year and for the chamber the year before. Things like that were going on, which was good. It was getting me back involved in this community and events. And then lo and behold, there was an opportunity. There was a job available at Downtown New Bedford, Inc. And I talked to the powers that be here and um, thought, wow, this would be an absolutely great fit for me. Really get me back involved in the community in a big way a nice leadership position um, at a time when there's so much going on in downtown. Just in October this past year, I took the position as ex executive director of Downtown New Bedford, Inc. And um, it's been smooth sailing since. <laughs> I know even my mindset at the time was, well, I need to go on. I need to go on to another four-year college in order to finish. And I didn't do that. And sometimes I thought, well, maybe that's lacking. I didn't do that. But I just, things, life got busy. Um, and things started happening, and I felt like, boy, if I hadn't done the, if I had not done BCC, what, how differently things would have turned out, or how differently things would have been. When I think of BCC, I think, yep, thank God I did that. You know, it really, it really made a difference in my life. More of around BCC coming up after this. Here are some other news and notes from around BCC. February marks African American History Month and there are events planned across all BCC campuses. You can get a complete list of all the events by visiting the college's dedicated webpage for African American History Month activities. The unofficial kickoff of African American History Month actually took place last month 
at the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast held on January 19th. In conjunction with the City of Fall River and the Bethel AME Church, the event showcased special musical selections as well as winners of the Fall River Middle School Essay and Poster Contests. The keynote address was given by New Bedford School Superintendent Dr. Portia Bonner, who used the occasion to promote the advances made by the African American community, specifically the election of President Obama. But she cautioned that there are still strides yet to be made. Are we less intelligent and only good for hard labor is still a debate. With our studies of the human genome and IQs, scientists, psychologists, and educators still would like to argue that our differences are directly correlated with the color of our skin. So, America, how are we doing with closing the achievement gaps, graduation rate, dropout rate, mortality rate, employment and earnings, and wellness? Is it based upon the color of our skins that begin to statistically put us in categories that are underperforming when we look at all of these demographic factors? How are we doing as a people? BCC has always made a point to celebrate the accomplishments of all its employees. That was the case on January 15th as over 70 part-time employees were recognized for their years of service to the college. Kudos were handed out to those employees who have served between 5 and 35 years here at BCC. Speaking of congratulations, four college employees have been selected for recognition by the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development an organization dedicated to the professional development of community college employees. Professor Mary Zahm, adjunct instructor Robert Cooey, IT employee James Armstrong, and maintainer Dana Norman will receive their awards at the NISOD annual conference this May in Austin, Texas. Another sign that BCC puts its students first, the college has signed an agreement with Westfield State College that will allow BCC students to earn a four-year Westfield State business degree while staying close to home. The agreement allows BCC transfer students to take all their Westfield classes via distance learning. This is BCC's first articulation agreement for an online distance learning program with a state college. BCC has received a $200,000 grant from the EPA to provide environmental assessment and cleanup training for contaminated brownfield sites in New Bedford. Students in the program will be recruited from impacted brownfields neighborhoods. On to the hardwoods now as the men's and women's basketball squads will soon be wrapping up their 2008-2009 campaigns. As of this taping, the men have a record of 5-10 and 10, and the women sit at 3-10 and 11. Now some lingering news from the fall soccer season as members of the men's and women's teams have received postseason honors. Jason Kudo of Somerset was named to the first team NJCAA Division III All-American squad and the first team Division III All-Region team for Region 21. Kudo tied for first in the nation in goals with 31 on the year. Kyle Lopes of Fall River, who led the country in assists, was also named to the first team all-region squad, while defender Justin Pereira of Fairhaven was named to the region's second team. On the women's side, Chelsea Mativier of New Bedford was named to the women's first all-team region squad. That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. We leave you today with one of the musical selections from last month's Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast. Thanks for watching.